Hi, I'm Michael Cashew. And I'm Adi Cashew, and you're listening to The WAG Podcast. This podcast is about health, wellness, and personal development. Each episode is a short conversation between Adi and I on a single topic with actionable steps. We cover everything from food, mindset, fitness, and relationships. We started WAG because of the way health and fitness changed our lives, so we hope to share a tool or two that helps you along your way. back. Hey, good morning. Guys, thanks for joining us today. Today, we are talking about how to have a group discussion that goes beyond surface level. Well, group like hangout, like you're hanging out with your friends and generally it's pretty surface level. You're catching up. How are things going? What things have happened in your life? But it doesn't often go any deeper than that. So today we're talking about how to have deeper connections with your friends at your hangout. And one more thing before we get started, uh, if you would like to ask a question and have it answered on the show, we are starting to do more of these where we will play your question on the episode and then we'll answer it. We'll spend an entire episode answering your question. So you can do that by going to workingagainstgravity.com forward slash podcast, scroll down to the start recording button, leave a nice concise message with your name, where you're from and your question. And if it's great, we'll answer it. Okay, let's get into this thing. Okay. So why are we talking about this? First off, I think that as we get older, unless we are in our hometown, right? And we have the same friends that we've had for our entire lives. And Mm -hmm. we already have these really deep, meaningful relationships that are full of trust and connection, right? Most people these days, I think, we don't have the same number of repetitions available to us when we're hanging out with people. Like when we're in high school, when we're in elementary school and high school, we're with- Or college. Or college, we're with these people all, all day, every day. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't, we don't even have to be very intentional about creating trust and connection with people. It just sort of happens over time. Yeah. And so as an adult, we're lucky if we see certain friends once a month or twice a month, unless we're like really, really intentional about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The one tragedy of getting older is that you have less time to make old friends. Yeah. I like that one. Mm -hmm. So secondly, I think that in general, I think we're craving a different level of relationship than uh, generations before us. I think we want to be have more intimacy in our, in our relationships. We want to know people better. Um, I don't know exactly why that is, but I've, I really have this feeling that people are craving something deeper. I think it is possible that we just – there's so much online. There's so much convenience. There's so much – ability to be more isolated than there has been. I mean, we live in a house, we get our groceries delivered to our house. We don't see people at the grocery store. We we don't go we to almost never talk to our neighbors. Yeah, we where we live, we don't talk to our neighbors. We're moving to an area so we can be in an area where we get to know our neighbors. Um we do go to a gym where we have some people at the gym and like we we see them in that one hour pretty consistently, but Outside of that, it's really easy to just not see people consistently. We also work online. A lot of Mm -hmm. people work online. So it's different when you're in an office and you're talking to people. And then a lot of times you don't want your deep, meaningful relationships to be connected to work always because it's it's got the same vibe of like working all the time. I mean, it's not the worst thing. But outside of work relationships and – those types of things, it's really hard to have, you know, just like your friends, like your solid friends that are like the friends that you had in high school or the friends that you had uh, growing up. Yeah. And this is this is a way to take it much, much deeper than it probably was in high school, certainly for me. Mm-hmm. Me too, for sure. This is definitely what we're going to talk about today is just some ways to take somebody that you want to be friends with and take it deeper more quickly, which builds trust faster and just takes your relationship to another level. I think the both of us have used all the strategies we're going to talk about today and it's helped us get to know people quicker, to know that we really want these people in our lives and it's also helped them love us more. Mm -hmm. They've gotten to know us, um, they can relate to us more and we really have started to build a solid community of people from doing stuff like this. So how do we do it? So the first thing that 
is a mistake that I see people making when they're hanging out in groups. So you go to a dinner, maybe it's like five or six people, or you go to somebody's house and you do like girls are doing the, they're watching The Bachelorette weekly or whatever it is. And there's always these like side conversations happening. So it's a big group of people. So maybe three people start talking and then two other people are talking and it's, you can't be in on each other's conversations. It's a little bit too loud. And of course, when you first see somebody and you haven't seen them in a while, it's okay to get through the, how have things been going? Has anything been going on in your life? Is there anything you want to celebrate? That kind of thing. But what really could take a hangout to the next level is having a group conversation. And what we mean by a group conversation is instead of just having these little side conversations where sometimes, have you ever noticed that sometimes there's always like somebody who's left out who like doesn't really talk that much. There, There's two people talking, there's two people talking, and there's one person just kind of like listening in on mm-hmm. the other conversation. Some people are not as bold as others to like just get in on those side conversations. So if you really want to get to know everybody, you want to build deeper connection and have a group conversation can really allow that to happen. So instead, you can say something like, hey, let's like ask – a question to the group and everyone go around the circle or the table or wherever you guys are and each person answers the question. So one thing that I've done a couple times, I've even done this at like some business conferences I've been at. It's really, really allowed. Pe- like people have loved it. One thing was like, what is the best piece of advice you've ever gotten in your life? And you go around and everybody gives the best piece of advice that they've gotten in their life. They tell a little bit of a story about it. And you know, it's just like easy to talk about. It's fun. You get to know people better. It's interesting. And then everybody is engaged in the same conversation. So we all are feeling connected at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I've, I've participated in ones that you've led and it's like everyone just feels like there's something to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's awesome. And it doesn't feel like it's not just, I think surface level is the best way to describe it. Or we're just, you know, chatting. It's we're we're getting to know each other. We're growing. We're really connecting. And it's very, it's intentional. I think mm-hmm. the intentional aspect of it is really important where you're making a stand like, I want to get to know you better. Mm-hmm. Uh, so asking a question and posing it to the entire group and having a table conversation is a really great way. I know it's kind of scary to initiate something like that. So if you're thinking, oh gosh, that would be so scary, pick something super easy. Pick like, what's your favorite food? Or what are you most excited for right now? Yeah. What are you most excited about right now? Easy things that everyone can go around the circle and just answer the question and you get to know a little bit about them. Next, if you want to take these conversations to a deeper level, then if you're at some point, you have to be the leader. Don't expect other people to just take the conversation there. If you really crave it being deeper, then you step up to the plate and take the conversation there. So that might be in the fact that you start a group conversation. That might be in the the actual question that you ask in the group. And in a second, we will We'll go through a, a number of different questions and ideas that you can use in these group conversations. But don't just wait around for other people to start. In vulnerability, we need more leaders. We need people to show us how it's done, to be courageous, and to take the conversation there. And I think another aspect of the same thing that you're talking about is that going first also means going being more vulnerable first. So not necessarily just initiating the conversation, but let's say the the question is what are you most excited about right now? Don't just say say five words and then move on to the next person. Like really think about it and take the question seriously and talk about it and maybe share something that most people wouldn't know about you. Maybe just really think deeply before you share so that you go a little deeper than what would be, oh, I'm really excited about the weekend. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm really excited about this play that I'm going to go see this weekend or something like that. Like really think about what are you most excited about this weekend? What do people maybe not know about you? Uh, and how can that help people get to know you a little bit better? And if you start by be going that deep in the conversation, then other people are going to feel like they have permission to do so too. And if you don't feel bold to do it, another way of doing it is if you have a friend in the group that you know will go there, that you're like, okay, this friend always is vulnerable. They always share. They're super confident. Like if you have Michael in your group, if Michael is sitting there and you don't feel like you could take the group there, but you are going to initiate it and and you know he's going to answer the question really deeply, make sure Michael goes first. Because every single time we've ever done this, the person who goes 
deep and vulnerable sets the tone for how everybody else answers the question. And we've done it the wrong way before, where I think uh, recently at a mastermind that we held, the women's mastermind, we did we asked a question, I started, and I didn't go like as deep as I could have gone. And then the last person who went, went like all the way. And then every person wanted to go again because of the example of that last person set. Like they were just so into it. They had gotten so vulnerable. And everyone really, when you watch that happen, it's a really beautiful thing to see. And it gives you courage to be able to do it too. Mm -hmm. So that was a long-winded way of saying go deeper first. No, that was great. That was great. (laughs) So Next, we have a few different kind of structured ways of facilitating a group conversation. So the first is something called a sentence stem. Mm -hmm. So a sentence stem is very similar to a question. Okay, so a question is, what are you most excited about right now? And then a sentence stem would be, what I'm most excited about right now is dot, dot, dot. So as far as I know, the difference here is that when you're, ask the question and you're trying to answer a question, it's coming from your logical brain. And when you're doing a sentence stem, it's more creative and intuitive and you can sort of tap into your emotions and your just kind of get out of your head a little bit. Mm -hmm. And so a sentence stem can be a really great thing to start off a conversation. So you could have the sentence stem, if you really knew me, you would know that Dot, dot, dot. So it's basically just the first half of the sentence and then you finish the sentence. So it's the stem of the sentence and then you produce the flower to it. Um, and you could you could be like super surface level with it and talk about farts or something like that. Or you could take this as an opportunity as the person throwing out the sentence stem to really like set – Set the mood, set, yeah. set like the expectation about how deep this conversation is about and to go. You've, you've done this with our staff before where we get in a circle and we do sentence stems with each other. And one really amazing thing that Michael's taught me is that it's best if you start easy with this kind of thing, especially with a group of people that are not – I mean, we have some friends that will just like go deep right out of the gate, but most people are not familiar with these kinds of exercises. So – just uh, starting simple and then moving deeper. So I, th- I think I remember one question was, what your s- shoes say about you is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was like the second question. Yeah, so it's like you look at the person's, the person, we were standing one person in front of another, like a inner circle and an outer circle. And one person asks, like has a sentence stem, what your shoes say about you is. And then somebody's barefoot and it's like, you feel free, you feel comfortable. What your shoes say about you is that. And then you just keep finishing the sentence and you get like 30 seconds each person to do that. That is definitely a more structured way of um, like the circles is a more structured way of doing it because everyone was going at the same time. Mm -hmm. But uh, in your group, you can say something like, what I ate for breakfast is and everyone goes around the circle and talks about what they ate for breakfast. Like something super easy, just not a difficult thing, doesn't make people uncomfortable, and then slowly, slowly work up to making people more uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So an example of starting easy and going deeper is something I did for a girls' night that I had at the house. I started with, if you really knew me, you would know that. And then everybody went around, and then we went around one more time, and I only asked – I only did this twice. I mean, more than twice in a big group of people could take hours. Uh, And then I asked them again, if you really knew me, you would know that. So they basically had to answer the same question again, but go deeper than they went the first time. Uh, You can even say like my big – something I'm afraid to tell you is. And that's when things start getting like a little bit tricky. People Mm -hmm. start Mm -hmm. squirming a little bit in their seats. But if you're ready to go there and you really want to make deeper connections with people – it's amazing the kind of support you get and the kind of things that you learn about people from something like that. Yeah, it's amazing how how deep the conversations go so quickly and how much every single person in the group really appreciates it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've I've literally never been in a circle with a conversation like this where someone felt um, like negatively overwhelmed or like they didn't have a good time at the end. Mm-hmm. Everybody is so thankful that someone's willing to take take it there yeah. and everybody just feels so much closer to one another. Yeah. So start with something easy like what it, what I ate for breakfast is. Keep heading towards a little bit more difficult like something I'm really afraid to tell the group is. 
or what's most real in my life is, or my biggest strength is, my biggest weakness is. You can Google sentence stem ideas. Will come there up, will yeah. be hundreds. Another like similar thing that we've done before is called rosebud thorn. Some call it like high low piccolo or different things like that. Mm-hmm. So the rose Peak is Valley. what's going best in your life right now. Like what what's the most beautiful thing in your life right now? I'll back up. So this is something that you ask to the entire group and the each person will go around and say their rose, bud, and thorn and then pass to the next person. Mm-hmm. So the rose is the best thing that's going on in your life right now. The bud is something that is new and emerging, something that's like budding up in your life, mm-hmm. something that you think is going to turn into something awesome. And then the thorn is your biggest challenge or obstacle in your life right now. And yeah. this is another area where you can choose to keep it like really surface level or just like really get down to what's real and, and challenging for you. Mm-hmm. I love rosebud thorn. And that's a good one. Like we don't suggest necessarily that your entire evening should be dedicated towards doing something like this, but taking a section of your hangout to just ask rosebud thorn, like let's go around the table, do rosebud thorn, and then go back to regular conversation afterwards mm-hmm. and start the day, start the night off with just chatting and catching up and then, you know, go play a game afterwards or whatever it is. It just – Adding little bits and pieces of this into the times that you hang out with your friends are, I really think, going to be some of the moments that you look back on and you're so grateful for. And really, sometimes it's the opportunity for you to be able to show up and be an amazing friend. Like sometimes we found out that our friends are being challenged with things that we would have never known if we didn't do something like this. And it really gives us an opportunity to show up for them. Or someone wants to celebrate something that we wouldn't have known and it gives them a chance. Maybe they, they're a little bit, um, they have a lot of humility and they wouldn't have shared something like that outside of a structured scenario. It's just fun to get to know people deeper. For sure. And then like the end goal is to, anytime we're hanging out with people, if we have something that we really want to get off of our chest or we really need help with, or we were, we're super excited about something and we want to share that with someone that it just like, we're able to express ourselves and have that be received by our friends. Mm -hmm. This type of thing just sort of like trains these relationships to be ready for those things when they come up. Yeah, totally. It really builds trust in your relationship that you can share something and people can receive it gracefully and they can say, with it and they can support you and it really allows you to feel like you're cared for and people love you. Mm -hmm. I think by using some of these techniques we have together, we have more deep relationships than ever in our lives. Like I've had close friends for sure here and there, but I have about 10 to 15 people in my life that I really feel like I trust Mm -hmm. and connect with over here. Mm Mm-hmm. I agree. Cool. So hopefully this was helpful, guys. Get out there. Be vulnerable. Lead the way. let us know if you've implemented it and how it's gone because we want to share it with you. So thanks for listening, guys. Thanks for joining us. Stay in touch by signing up for our newsletter at workingagainstgravity.com or on Instagram at workingagainstgravity. And don't forget to subscribe to us on iTunes, leave us a five-star review, and refer a friend. We'll be back next week with another episode. Talk to you then.